Hello students, welcome to this first session of Master Mains PYQ. Master Mains PYQ is a very new and unique initiative of Next IS as a part of our commitment to student support. Right, and if I am going to just speak about the relevance of PYQ, enough has been spoken by various toppers, your faculties. Right, so what we are intending to do in this program is to help students execute that idea. And through this program, we uh, will ensure that you get sufficient answer writing practice through previously asked UPSC CSE mains questions. So how will this program work? Although there is a separate video created for that purpose, I, uh, I would want you guys to first watch that video then come here, but I'll give you a brief idea. So this program will work in the following manner. What we will be doing is we will be uploading one previously asked UPSC CSE mains question on YouTube, which we expect that the students will write and submit. If you submit, we intend to evaluate it. So we will be providing uh, you with free evaluation. Right. And then a discussion will follow for the same question and we will be also providing you with model answers. So through this process, we are going to learn a little bit of answer writing some new concepts. So I welcome all of you who are part of this journey. Now the first questions that we have selected for today, you have already received on YouTube. This was the first question asked in GS paper 2 in CSE mains 2023. The first question was. Constitutionally guaranteed judicial independence is a prerequisite of democracy comment, right? So this was the first question asked in your paper to means 2023 from the role of judiciary part of your syllabus. And whenever you read a particular question, you have to identify certain things, right? Uh, certain important keywords that are present in the question. But we will understand all of that. So let us proceed with decoding this uh, question, decoding the demand of the question first. Right. So first I will be talking about what is the demand of the question. Demand of the question. Now if you look very closely, any question, it's basically has two components. One is the discourse. And then there is a directive, right? The discourse can be just a statement. It can be a context provided. It can be a context followed by a question, right? The context is a discourse. And the directive can be simple directive words like discuss, comment, comment. For example, we here we have comment, examine, etc. Or they can be opinionated directives like do you think, how far do you think, etc, etc. So essentially a question has two components, discourse and the directive. The first thing that you need to do is focus on the discourse. This is the discourse. Now read the discourse. It says constitutionally guaranteed judicial independence is a prerequisite of democracy. The first thing that you need to do is to check whether this discourse is a statement of fact or is there a debate on it? And you can clearly see that you cannot debate on this statement. Indeed, judicial independence is prerequisite for democracy. Right? So this is a statement of fact. Right? And the directive, which is comment, would basically mean that the candidate has to provide his perspective on the topic through various arguments substantiated with examples and evidences. Right. Now, the second thing is the structure of the answer. The structure. So, the structure of the answer in general is intro, body and then you have to write a conclusion. That is the general understanding of the structure of the answer. We will get into uh, the finer aspects as we uh, proceed. So, first we will discuss the introduction in this particular question. Now, since it's a 10 marker, it's advisable that the introduction should not exceed more than 30 words, right? The best way to introduce this particular question would be to explain the context. Now, talking about judicial independence, what is judicial independence? Right. Judicial independence, talking about judicial independence. So what is judicial independence? Judicial independence is the 
fundamental principle in the field of law uh, and administration which basically means that judiciary at all times must remain independent of outside and external interferences particularly by the legislative and the executive branches of the government it is the cornerstone of doctrine of separation of powers right it is the cornerstone of doctrine of separation of powers which ensures that power is not concentrated in any particular branch of the government and the supreme court also has in various cases like keshwanand bharti keshwanand bharti indira gandhi versus raj narayan indira gandhi versus raj narayan and ir kohlo has emphasized on judicial independence and judicial review right so this is the idea that you have to basically summarize you can explain the context uh, in your own words within 30 words right and then you have to move towards the body of the answer now the body of the answer again you have to come back you have to look at the question very very closely if you look at the discourse there are two ideas that you can uh, spot the first is the statement goes like constitutionally guaranteed judicial independence is a prerequisite for democracy right now there is no debate on it but then how is the constitution ensuring judicial independence that is the first question and how is a, how is judicial independence prerequisite for democracy that is the second idea that is present in the question so clearly we can identify two parts in the body and the first part is the first part of the body is judicial independence you need to establish that judicial independence is located in the indian constitution right so judicial independence in indian constitution how can we locate right the very first observation that you need to focus on is article 50 if you focus on article 50 what does article 50 say article 50 says that judiciary should be separated from the executive and legislature right and although separation of powers has not been mentioned anywhere in the constitution and neither does the indian constitution prescribe to a watertight separation of power but separation of power is implicit across the indian constitution it has been already upheld in ram jawaya kapoor versus state of punjab that indian constitution indeed is based on functional separation of powers right so the separation of power is not watertight it is a functional separation where each organ is having its designated and defined areas and authority and this kind of a separation of power functions like checks and balances system right so separation of powers uh, is a very uh, um, uh, strong argument to suggest that the judicial independence is envisaged in the constitution the second important point that you can note is the process of appointment appointment of judges the appointment of judges to the higher judiciary in india it is done by the president in consultation with the chief justice of india so through this process judiciary has a say in its own appointment and this ensures that the executive cannot uh, influence the selection process right they have been granted security of tenure right the, the judges have been granted the security of tenure they can only be removed by the president after a process of impeachment in the parliament which is very rigorous right the third important point is the expenses charged the salaries and allowances the salaries and allowances the expenses charged uh, uh, of the uh, supreme court the administrative expense the pension etc they are charged on the consolidated fund of india which basically means that uh, 
दे आर नॉट सब्जेक्ट टू पार्लियामेंट्री अप्रूवल राइट सो मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑल दो नॉट एक्सप्लिसिटली बट इट डज प्रोवाइड फॉर जुडिशियल रिव्यू राइट जुडिशियल रिव्यू इज इम्प्लिसिटली प्रोवाइडेड इन वेरियस द पावर ऑफ जुडिशियल रिव्यू इज प्रोवाइडेड थ्रू विच प्रोविजन आर्टिकल थर्टी इन थर्टी टू टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स राइट एंड जुडिशियल रिव्यू इट बेसिकली मीन्स दैट जुडिशरी हैज द पावर टू रिव्यू द एक्शन ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड द लेजिस्लेचर विच बेसिकली इंश्योर्स दैट द लेजिस्लेचर एंड द एग्जीक्यूटिव ब्रांचेस के नॉट एक्ट आर्बिटरली एंड द लास्ट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट हियर इज नो डिस्कशन ऑन कंडक्ट ऑन ऑफ द कंडक्ट ऑफ जजेस सो आर्टिकल वन ट्वेंटी वन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन टू वन वन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन it provides that no discussion of the conduct of any judge of the supreme court or the high court in the parliament or the state legislature be done right unless the motion to impeach the judge judge is under process right so these are the arguments that uh, you can write there are uh, several more right but these are the important ones this con this uh, completes the first part of your body moving on to the second part the second part is now we have established judicial independence under the indian constitution right so now we have to move to the second part which basically is how a constitutionally guaranteed judicial independence how this judicial independence is a prerequisite for democracy so how judicial independence is pre रिक्विजिट फॉर डेमोक्रेसी राइट दिस इज द हेडिंग नाउ द वेरी फर्स्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट दैट जुडिशियल इंडिपेंडेंस इज अ प्री रिक्विजिट फॉर डेमोक्रेसी इज फ्री एंड फेयर इलेक्शन फ्री एंड फेयर इलेक्शंस राइट नाउ in various cases like pucl versus union of india kyoto holland versus zachilu the supreme court has held that democracy is a part of basic structure of our constitution and free and fair elections are basic features of uh, this process right so democracy basically also contemplates that the elections should be free and voters should be freely exercising their choice in this process therefore to ensure the sanctity of the process to ensure level playing field for every citizen of india to uphold his right to vote and also right to contest judiciary and independent judiciary is very much important now judiciary in recent year in recent times has been very much uh, up in arms against criminalization of politics right it is uh, giving very relevant judgments for electoral reforms right so therefore through the an independent therefore through these uh, actions of the judiciary we can say that independent judiciary is very much important for democracy right the second argument that you can write here is about rule of law right rule of law judicial independence if you look it is the basic premise of the rule of law why because only an independent judiciary which is free from influence of any external agents can implement the laws without any fear or partiality right so to ensure equality before law and equal protection of law we need an independent judiciary and thus uh, rule of law is very much uh, an important idea uh, uh, in a functioning of a vibrant democracy right the next important argument that you can talk about is checks and balances checks and balances and uh, independent judiciary ensures that there 
is an effective check over the misuse of powers by other branches of the government. It ensures that the other branches of the government do not turn authoritarian. Now, if you look at uh, various uh, landmark judgments, one of the most important judgment here was Keshwanand Bharti, right, which gave the doctrine of basic structure. And immediately after that, the government tried to invalidate the doctrine of basic structure by passing the 42nd Amendment Act. Right. The 42nd Amendment Act. What did the 42nd Amendment Act do? 42nd Amendment Act, it tried to amend Article 368 by inserting Clause 4 and Clause 5. So, Clause 4 and Clause 5 basically said that any constitutional amendment is outside the scope of judicial review which was corrected in Minerva Mills case. Right. So, Minerva Mills case, in essence, restored the balance of power and therefore we say that an independent judiciary is very important for checks and balances right between various branches of the government the next important point that you can note here is why uh, why do we need an independent judiciary what about rights right the most important thing that uh, the uh, uh, founding fathers gave to the citizens of india were rights and liberties right and independent judiciary is important for the protection of rights and liberties now these rights and liberties these are not gifts that are bestowed upon by the state their sanctity is directly through the constitution and therefore you need an independent body, an independent judiciary to ensure that whenever the state tries to encroach on your rights and liberties, the judiciary upholds them. And how does the judiciary uphold them? The judiciary upholds them through uh, writ jurisdiction under 32, 226, 32 for the Supreme Court and 226 basically for the high courts, right? So protection of rights and liberties of the vulnerable, of the minorities, of the uh, weaker sections of the society, the onus completely lies on the higher judiciary in India and therefore we need an independent judiciary. What is the next point that we uh, uh, can uh, write here? We can talk about evolution of rights. We can talk about evolution of rights. Now, judicial independence has ensured, in India, it has ensured the expansion and evolution of the rights of the citizen based on the changing dynamics of the society. Now, you can take example of the transgender uh, rights. Right? There was a case, Nalsa, Nalsa versus Union of India. In Nalsa versus Union of India, the third gender was identified, right? And also their rights were identified. Similarly, there have been various judgments like Putuswami uh, judgment, which uh, basically gave uh, us a right to privacy. It located right to privacy in Article 21 of the Constitution. It expanded the meaning. Article 21 in itself has gone through expansion uh, in the last uh, couple of decades, right? That is a very important uh, 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 thing that we enjoy because of an independent judiciary. And the last point that he, you can note here is an independent judiciary is very much important for conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. Why conflict resolution? Because the kind of federalism we that we are having where the, there is, uh, which is basically a centralizing kind of a federalism, Disputes are bound to happen and therefore in order to resolve the center state and interstate conflicts, we have an independent judiciary and article 131, article 131 bestows this power on the Supreme Court, right? Article 131 acts as a safety valve in our federalism, right? Which is very much important which is very much important to ensure that our federalism works, that cooperative federalism, the vision of cooperative federalism uh, has, uh, is protected, right? And uh, uh, the confrontations, whatever come may, 
uh, are peacefully resolved, right? There is an independent judiciary to do it, which is very much important for the democracy to function properly, right? So these are the arguments that you write in the second part of your body. And then the next part of your answer would be to conclude. Now, what all things have we stated in our a discussion of this particular answer the conclusion basically should be a summary of what you have already stated right throughout the answer it should be a concluding remark it kind of a summary uh, it there can be different uh, approaches in different answers we'll uh, discuss and you will learn uh, when we are discussing different answers but for this particular answer it is very important to state that judiciary plays a very important role as the interpreter of the constitution right and the principles of the constitution therefore only an independent judiciary independent judiciary only an independent judiciary is or can we can say can ensure liberal and citizen centric interpretation of the laws and constitution the laws and constitution right and this is very much important the idea of judicial important uh, independence is ingrained in the idea of a participatory democracy right it is very much much important uh, to in uh, to uh, 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 complete that vision of participatory democracy right preservation of rule of law and ensure social justice right so that is how we will conclude this particular answer don't have to write such a detailed conclusion i'm just giving an idea Right. You can summarize the idea in your own words. So this completes uh, the first uh, uh, question for today. So we will meet uh, very soon in the next discussion. Uh, till then, please subscribe to the channel. Also, uh, ring the bell icon and be updated for more such content. And I hope you have already uh, submitted your answers in the description below. You can find the link in the description below. Thank you.